I was watching a documentary called, Hillsong, a mega church exposed. I used to be very weary of things like this, after all Satan is willing to do anything and everything to damage the cause of Christ. Unfortunately, as I grew older I find that there is a lot that greedy selfish people who have absolutely no fear of God that have no problems tarnishing God's name. The horrors in these churches run from sexual abuse and assault, sexual scandals, to taking and selling this new prosperity gospel to line their own pockets. I think there is a temptation to cover these things up simply because we don't want God to get a bad name. Surprisingly, I think that it was God himself that exposes these things in his church. After all what would it say about God if he allowed these things to be covered up? God will not be mocked. I firmly believe that it is every Christian's duty to bring these things to light and to make it so commonplace that if these things are done in the church it will publicly and legally punish such people. So much so that the next individual that thinks they can get away with it because of their position in the church will seriously have to think twice. There are a lot of things the church should be repenting of like the acceptance of gossip in its walls. Haughty eyes and judgmental behaviors, the lack of love and plain common decency. The church that puts more of its energy in being culturally relevant than biblically mandated. That trusts marketing to attract than God's truth. Today though I want to speak on the prosperity gospel. Many churches today want people to come in, get a nice motivational speech to feel good and inspired, and then told that God is a magic genie here for them. They are told that if you do what the Bible says in a particular way and claim it while telling God that he has to or he's a liar then boom. You will be prosperous. Of course part of the magic formula to have prosperity is to give the church all your money. Be cautious of churches who push for tithing all the time while pushing that your tithing will bring you God's rich blessing. Funny that if you ask these churches if you could tithe your money to like feed the homeless they will say something to the effect that, that's not tithing and it doesn't count as much. Don't get me wrong I am a firm believer in tithing and yes God certainly blesses it. I believe in tithing to your local church which helps in its functions and ministries. I'm just saying be cautious of those who ask for your money all the time and pushes the give till it hurts so you get something back. The Prosperity Gospel You can recognize these churches easily. Not only do Prosperity Gospel churches push for money and give you feel-good theology. You will never hear the true gospel in that, we are all sinners destined to hell unless we repent from our sins. This means turning away from sin and walking with God by making a choice for Him and walking in faith. Jesus said in John 3 verses 16 to 18. For God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son, that whoever believes in Him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through Him. Whoever believes in Him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only Son, and also, Luke 24, verses 46 to 47. He told them, This is what is written, The Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in His name to all nations. Beginning at Jerusalem, what it doesn't say is that God owes you. Do you really think that you can manipulate God into giving you free stuff? In fact Jesus says that life will be hard for you not a life of luxury. In John 15 verse 20. Remember what I told you, a servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will persecute you also. If they obeyed my teaching, they will obey yours also, Jesus had no place of his own, Luke 9 verse 58. And Jesus said to him. Foxes have holes, and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head, if we have a place then that's God's undeserved blessing not something he owes us. Prosperity preachers use the, name it and claim it, and love to quote verses like, James 4 verse 2. You do not have because you do not ask God, while leaving out the very next verse, James 4 verse 3. When you ask, you do not receive, because you ask with wrong motives, that you may spend what you get on your pleasures. It comes down to this, who is God to you? A magic genie that is there to make your life easier. What if he doesn't give you what you want? What happens if the hardships in your life doesn't come out as prayed for? What happens if, in your eyes, God fails you? You're not going to believe anymore at your own peril. Or maybe you think if you hold your breath God will give in. It's funny that there are so many families that believe in kowtowing to their children. They do it because they think they're doing their kids a favor but really the only thing they create are disrespectful spoiled brats. Prosperity preachers are scam artists teaching their congregation to be God's little spoiled brats. God wants a bona fide relationship with us and we achieve that by getting to know him through his word and teachings. 
we get to know him by trusting him regardless if we have little or an abundance. James 4 verse 8. Come near to God and he will come near to you. Wash your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded, Jesus died on the cross to have a relationship us not to be a lucky charm to be catering to a bunch of spoiled brats that think they can manipulate him. If you think that, you will be disappointed.